equilibrium versus rate based processes. Let's check out this and we're not going to go deep into the actual models, equations and so on, but it's very important for you guys and I'm pretty sure you will encounter it later on either when you read a textbook or when you are checking out any article on what is the main difference between these two main approaches towards uh, distillation processes, extractions or overall any type of mass transfer operation which requires equilibrium. As you can imagine, we typically assume equilibrium is always present through all the stages, but there is another way in which we can actually model this much more, uh, let's say, re sticking to reality. Because of course, imagining and assuming that every single stage, every single uh, tray on the column is in equilibrium, both thermal and chemical equilibrium, well, it's a little bit more of a naive situation. So a very quick overview before we actually jump into the individual lectures is equilibrium based methods are the most straightforward actually is what you will typically encounter whenever starting to analyze a unit operation related to equilibrium in the so-called equilibrium model. The vapor and liquid phases are assumed to be in thermal equilibrium. So let it be. And what do I mean with a stage? I don't always assume this is a tray. It can be a, a section of a packing or it can be also a section on the column. But let it be this for simplicity to be a tray. So this is the second tray. And what we are assuming here is that this vapor going out and this liquid going out, so that's why we use two and two. These two guys are in thermal equilibrium and of course in chemical equilibrium. Now, as you can guess, this is not always the case. Actually, not only thermal, but also in compositions. Sometimes there is not enough time for the species to actually take place in equilibrium, but that's for later uh, analysis. For now, let's assume that in reality, in our tower, we are having that equilibrium. Murphy's vapor phase efficiency is used to describe the departure from the equilibrium. So, of course, uh, we acknowledge this problem and we, well, technically not we, but Murphy stated a equilibrium concept or efficiency concept which will model a actual deviation from reality so that was great because we just needed to assume a efficiency and that was great the equilibrium model as you can imagine is very simple because it's the very basic equilibrium model plus a efficiency and you get a model which is pretty straightforward well in reality you are going to see that even though this is uh, simple or let's say not that rigorous it is still a little bit uh, complex to solve by hand what we do is everything on a matrix and solve the equations all by computer the accuracy of the model depends on the prediction of the Murphy efficiency right here of course because if we know that this is deviating and if we are using Murphy's efficiency well therefore you can you can and should assume that Murphy's efficiency should be modeled correctly now, rate-based methods, as you can imagine, someone stated, why should we always assume equilibrium? Why wouldn't we go for a rate-based model? So the good thing here is that you don't need to assume a model for the efficiencies because we will be calculating the actual uh, behavior of the stage. So this one right here and this one right here are no longer assumed to be in equilibrium. What we're going to do is a individual energy, mass and equilibrium balances calculate the respective uh, uh, fluid flow here, here, the rates going in and out, and assume that there is no equilibrium. We are going to calculate this by the actual conditions in the column. It is capable of predicting the actual performance of the process, which is great because what you want is, of course, what's happening, not what is being modeled. The rate-based model, model is accurate, as you can imagine. Of course, it's going to be more into reality because you are basing your model into actual flow rates rather than assumptions of equilibrium and the problem as you can imagine is a little bit more complicated more data requirements and more uh, let's say equations so if this one was 
right here was already complex. This is for sure you are going to need a lot of computer power to solve this. And sometimes it's going to be very difficult to converge, even though you may have all the data required, it's still difficult to converge because this is not a linear process or a linear methodology to solve because, well, I don't want to get ahead. But for now, just assume that the rate-based method is more accurate, more complex, and will not always converge.